You are listening to the Freedom Podcast with Van Moody. Our desire is that you begin to live in freedom every day. Freedom in your mind, freedom in your finances, freedom from the external pressures of life. Prepare to be transformed as we seek to be free, mind, body, and soul. Let's get started. Hi, friends. Welcome to the Freedom Podcast with me, your host, Van Moody. On this podcast, we always explore a variety of topics that are critical to a life of freedom, purpose, and fulfillment. I want to thank you, as I always do each podcast episode, for joining us. And I always love to remind you what you can expect in this podcast. You can expect great conversation, wisdom, laughter, authenticity, and practical guidance for how to be free in a variety of areas of your life. Now, one of the topics that we cover monthly is financial freedom. I have long believed that financial literacy and financial empowerment is the new civil rights movement, which means for all of us, we cannot be truly free. We can't experience true freedom without also experiencing financial freedom. This topic is extremely important. And each month, as we dig into financial freedom, I am blessed to be joined by my brother from another mother, the co-hostess with the mostest, George B. Thompson, the the millionaire's mind, right? He is the <laughs> individual that is a maven in the space of finances. He is not only a great pastor and a great brother and father and husband, but he is a very successful financial planner all the way from L.A. George, good afternoon, bro. Thanks for being with us on today's episode again. I am so glad to be here, and I'm excited about our topic today because when we discuss financial freedom, this right here is the most freeing, one of the most freeing things that you can do. Incredible. Well, in today's episode, George, we've talked about a lot of things in previous podcasts, but now we got to deal with the elephant in the room, right? We right. we talked about uh, your mindset and some other components that are important if you are really going to be financially free and go down the, the path of wealth creation. We've talked in previous podcast episodes about the different stages that many people are on, whether you are struggling or whether you are steady or have surplus. And we talked about all of those things. But we really can't lean into a number of things that we talked about in previous podcast episodes until we deal with what we're going to deal with today, the elephant in the room, and that is debt. I love the way, George, that you frame it. You uh, have coined an acronym that I've used in a variety of ways. It's called Do Good. That's right. (laughs) What does that stand for? I got to do it one more time, everybody. Everybody right now, I know you may be driving your car, maybe sitting somewhere, but I want you to say, Do Good. I'm going to do it one more time. You guys ready? I want to say, good. Do Good. And then roll down your window, yell, you know, regardless of what freeway you're on, and yell for someone to do good. And good, obviously spelled G O O D. Get out of debt. So yes. we do that because we want to show you literally how to get out of debt. It is the most freeing thing. I mean, in your, in your opening, and the thing we always talk about, about being freedom. And that is being free. There's this game. There's a game board that people play. You ever heard of it? It's called Shoots and Ladders. You know, like people used to play that. So in Shoots and Ladders, it's it's like you start at one, and then your goal is to get to 100, everybody. So you start at one, and your goal is to get to 100. And then you're going up, and you you roll the dice, and you kind of go one at a time. But then you might hit a ladder that helps you climb up. And you can go from, you know, you can go from 14 up to like 48. By hitting yeah. the right thing. But this is another problem, though. You can land on another number, and it pulls you down. And, it's, and, and that's called a shoot. And what happens with that is that is literally like if we learn how to invest or certain things, that helps us go up. But then debt can bring you down. So that's yeah, one of the, the things shoot. we want to <laughs> That's the shoot. <laughs> and that's how we yeah. want to make sure that we show you this. And there's some mechanics behind it, but also starts, though, Actually, you have to get out of debt in the mind first. So that's why we start. That's why when you see me um, do live seminars, and then you know we've we've done that before at, at your uh, at your at your church, uh, Bishop Moody. Is this? I start off by saying, "Let's do affirmations," and then people start doing them. They start saying that, "Hey," and then one of the one of the one affirmations I have people say is, "I'm debt free," just so they can just at least first say it. 
Some people have never said it, let alone, like whenever I stand up before people, I've done this hundreds of times, show people, uh, it's probably in the thousands now, I show people like how to get out of debt in seminars. And whenever I say to them, hey, I'm going to show you guys how to be debt free, including your car and including your mortgage. And then yep. now, and then now, it's, and then now even student loan debt. You know, some people, you know, the, in their lifetime, they think I'll never be out of actually student loan debt. And I'm like, do you guys understand that affects your ability to build wealth? So I want to make sure we understand that debt affects your ability to, to build wealth. I want to kick it back over well, to you. But well, let's sorry, talk about that, because, you know, now in our country, there's a lot of talk around what the president uh, is trying to do in terms of student loan cancellation. And why that mm -hmm. is such a big deal is because of exactly what you said. You know, all of the debt and for a lot of individuals, student loan debt becomes one of the biggest sources of debt in their lives. It hamstrings the ability for there to be wealth creation. This this is a part of the reason why when you look at wealth creation across different, you know, ethnic communities and racial sec sections of our church, you see, you know, just vast differences. And a lot of it goes back to not only, you know, generationally did you get a head start, or, you know, did you come into anything? But then also it comes back to student loan debt. And so debt in general, when we think about it, you know, for me, biblically, George, my mind always goes to Proverbs 22 and 7. Because when you started talking about how we got to get out of debt in our mind first, I, I love to start there because the Bible is really clear. And I think it speaks to not only the physical effects of debt, but also the emotional effects of debt. When it says that the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is slave to the lender. That's a big deal. I love the imagery of the shoots and ladders and how the shoot of debt will pull you down. But I think if you add Proverbs 22 and 7 to it, not only does debt become a shoot and take you down, but what debt also does, according to Proverbs 22 and 7, is it puts like a, a chain around your ankle and prevents you from climbing the ladder the next time you get an opportunity. Uh, and so it, it just hamstrings us. But we also know that one of the truths of you know, our faith in Galatians 5 and 1 says that it's for freedom that Christ has set us free. So stand firm then and don't allow yourselves to be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. That includes financial debt. So that's God's will for us. His will for us is for us to be debt free, to not be enslaved to anyone or anything. And so, you know, when we think about debt, you know, there's so many different facets to it and we're going to open up several uh, of those on today's podcast, but I always love to start off by helping people understand the emotional effects of debt. So George, you and I have been successfully married for many years. We are not married together though. That's important to clarify, uh, but <laughs> <Yes. laughs> you're a brother, right? right? But, right. Uh, but you, you've been successfully married as a husband, your beautiful wife, and your children. Uh, I've got a great wife, beautiful and, and just affirming and incredible, but then also I've got great, a great family. And we know that while we've been successful and we've been blessed by way of our marriages and our family as pastors, we also know that one of the number one issues for many married couples is debt. It's money. It is. You know, it's one of the biggest reasons why marriages don't survive and families sometimes have unnecessary struggles. And it's not just the physical impacts or the inability to pay bills or to go on vacations. It's also the emotional effects of debt. So when you think right. about emotional effects of debt, there are a couple of things I want to share. Number one, it starts with depression and anxiety. Mm -hmm. There are increased cases of depression and anxiety because of the emotional effects of debt. It's hard when you are living under a mountain of debt to feel hopeful, to experience the joy that you should have every day. A lot of issues of anxiety, worry, and stress are connected to, to debt. But then also, number two, resentment and bitterness. They are part of the emotional effects of debt. A lot of individuals become resentful because debt prevents them from uh, going some places or experiencing other aspects of life that maybe they desire to or their other friends are and then resentment leads to bitterness right and so you know these are emotional effects another one is denial can i, ju can I jump in here real quick though i'm yeah, sorry please. this is so exciting i can't i can't do anymore also i think you've read my book though i think you've read what's that i, I take all i can stands i can't stand anymore. 
um, as you know, uh, so I, as you know, I, I wrote a book called The Wealth Cycle, and yeah. and actually there's a chapter that was born out of, and it's and that also a venture church, and you have Art of the Heart, you have that heart where we did the yeah. where we do a series in, in that area, and yeah, it talks about heart, relationships, God. Art of the Heart. Yeah. It has relation, so we're talking about relationships, and that's true about all the things that are happening, and 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 yes, I've been married for 19 consecutive years to my wife. Kim, to my wife, uh, uh, Kimberly. And, and one of the things is she comes with me when I do marriage ones because I want, because she talks to women about a lot of the issues. And I wrote a chapter in my book called Financial Intimacy. So what happens mm. is the reason why people have this, and that's, I, I, by the way, I wrote these things down. By the way, if you're under 40, you can just type this stuff. I know if you're over 40, we're going to write this stuff down. But you wrote down about re reluctance, and then you talked about uh, you talked about depression. But also, do you know what falls in the middle of that, why, why there's so many divorces? is pride, okay? Yeah. Pride is, is that you don't want to show somebody something. And you're going to just keep riding around like everything's okay. You start putting things on credit cards and then you're hiding it from your spouse. It's just saying, yep. this is what we want to do. So, you know, when we do premarital counseling. One of the things is, is we tell everybody to put all of it on the table. It's like, it, say you have $100,000 student loan debt. People say, well, I don't want to do that. Then he might not marry me. I'm like, well, but let's talk about that because now you're, you have a law degree. Or let's look at how we're going to create more income or how we're actually going to pay it off. So but there's yep. also a lot behind that. And the depression people have is because they also, and the, the, this is something that we're also going to handle on this, on this podcast and we're going to work with, is this. A lot of times people have depression. And let me tell you why you have depression is you think that you're the one that's going to have to do, manage this all out of your finances. So when you understand yep. that, that that's, you have to understand that we're going to talk to you about, number one, Philippians 4 and 19, my God shall supply all of my needs. So that for, first of all, yep. move away from greed. And then according to his riches and glory, that means how God is going to bless you. But we have to be good stewards over it. So we're going to have solutions to many of these. So we're talk So I just want to add that to it. I'm sorry, you're going to go to number three. Yeah, so let me finish going over these emotional effects. And then I want to jump into the practical side of how do we do good. So I told you that there are emotional effects of debt. The debt not only prevents wealth creation, but it affects you emotionally. Depression and anxiety, number one. Resentment and bitterness, number two. Denial, which goes along with pride that George just mentioned, is number three. Stress, just general stress. And the kind of stress that leads you to live a less than productive life is number four. Anger and frustration, um, that's a big one. You get frustrated. And, and you're angry because you cannot do or live the way that you so desire. You can't take advantage of certain opportunities. And then number six is regret. And then you know what regret leads to is number seven, shame and embarrassment. Mm -hmm. A lot of embarrassment happens because what debt will do is debt will expose you. Uh, I grew up in Atlanta, and uh, it's funny. I have a, a nickname for Atlanta. I call Atlanta, Georgia, the home of $30,000 millionaires. Because in Atlanta, you see a lot of individuals trying to um, outwardly project that they are doing well financially. Mm -hmm. uh, but the truth is they're not. And, um, you know, obviously Atlanta has a lot of successful people, so I'm not painting with too broad a stroke. But you also have a lot of individuals that are trying to keep up with the Joneses mm -hmm. and they're living beyond their level of uh, really good stewardship. And what ends up happening in some way, shape or form is shame and embarrassment, right? Because they're trying to live out these lifestyles that they really can't financially afford. And then the eighth uh, emotional effect of debt is fear, right? Because you live in this constant state of fear. What if I, what if my car gets towed and I don't have the money to get it out of impound? What if the, 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 the water heater breaks or the refrigerator goes on the fritz and we don't have enough money to cover it? So, you know, that's the kind of fear to keep you up at night. That's the kind of fear that will rob you of your joy and your peace. And once again, all of this goes back to why the Bible talks about how, you know, the borrower is slave to the lender. All of these things hamper your lifestyle, enslave your life so that you don't live free and live your best life. So now we talked about emotional effects, George. Now let's get into the practical side, right? Because we got to do good. We got to get right. out of debt. We know that debt is the enemy of wealth creation. Debt consumes wealth. 
So how do we get out of it, George? How do we how do right. we start doing good? Gotcha. So no, that's great. And then also, everybody like some of those things that all that you listed, all those nine, all those that list, we should be utilizing. Write down some of those because that's actually what we're trying to get away from. But what I want to know first of all is how we're going to do this. Is what we're going to. So I need to know your why first. Why you want to get out of debt? Because this is very similar to this is very similar to working out. We have to have a reason why we're doing it so that we yeah. do it every day. In other words, we have to say, I want to get out of debt. And then I'm going to, then I want you, I would pause for a while and let you write down three reasons why, but I'll let you guys know the number. I'll list them in order. Okay. All right. Number one, there's actually all three of these are kind of number ones, but, but number one of all the number ones is I like to buy a home. Come on. Number two, number one is quite simply, I don't want to work here and I want to retire. And you can't, it's like you're running every day on the treadmill. So that's, so that's, so you can't stop running right now. Like, you know, like, um, you know, whether it's the end of the month, the middle of the month or whatever it is in the month, people are like right now, boom, the bills are due right at the beginning of the month. Then you're paid in the middle of the month. You got to buy food, grocery, other things. Then you got to pay down this debt. Then you got to go to then the end of the month. Then you start repeating the process. So that's why people want to do that. And then actually, Actually, number three is actually um, you'd be you'd be surprised. It's actually, so that you can open up your own business, so that you can um, that you have the freedom to be able to do that. Um, so those are reasons why. So you may have so also those are, the, uh, those are the top three reasons, George. Those are the top why, three reasons number. why people come to me and they say, "I'll say, why are you here?" Um, right. And then also, I'm in this I'm in the state of California. So right now, home ownership is like out of ten people sitting in that class. Uh, every every ten people out of a hundred. 90% of those people are saying, so I can afford a home because rental prices keep rising. And if you've lived somewhere and paid rent for 30 years, you've essentially paid off someone's home. Yeah. And George, can I interject? The, the yes. home piece is so important because we know that the data is clear and the history of this data is extremely strong. That home ownership is one of the most important first steps to wealth creation. Oh, yeah. Yes. And then also, do you know when you were listing them? And then I, I did my best, everybody. You guys ought to get someone give me a high five. I listened. I didn't interrupt. I wanted to interrupt him every time he said something of, of, <laughs> of why he said people are frustrated and everything like that. Because do you, do you, you understand what I do is I'm a wealth manager. I help people build and create wealth. Do you know how many people get mad? And I'm not going to name the names today because we're going to get excited because you don't name any of them. But when I mention names of companies, you guys, you know, when you get up in the morning, there's certain companies that you use every day that some people make electric cars some people you go to certain stores where they have a food court <laughs> um, they sell gasoline there's certain companies that you utilize all the money that you spend at those companies um, and dad but I'm, I'm sorry I have to name some if you go to Target Walmart or Costco do you guys understand how much money you spend there which is which is fine but you understand we want to own the stocks in those companies Come but on. then people say why don't you buy the stocks in those companies and they'll say, oh, because I don't have the money. And then you're making an incorrect statement. You actually do have the money. You've elected to, remember that when you make a dollar, if you guys listen to our previous shows, you can spend it, lend it, or own something. So what we're right. going to do is we're going to move into ownership. So what the reason why that frustration is, and then you said, this is the term, this is what, this is what Pastor Moody said, didn't he? He said, we can rhyme and take back. He said, people have regret. They yep. regret that they didn't buy all the stuff that they, they, they spend. Okay, well, I'm sorry, we have to do it, but I'm doing one of them, Costco. My kids obviously know we own Costco stock because when I walk in there, they're like, hey, can I get a pair of pants? Hey, can I get this? I'm like, you sure can. Because you understand that we're putting in the dividends, okay? Come on. So I don't get excited to talk more about it. We're going to do a whole episode, and uh, 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 Bishop Moody and I are going to do a whole episode called Building a Farm. And we're going to talk about how we build it. And on a farm, they have chickens, cows, pigs, and horses. We're going to go through this whole thing, and we're going to show you how to build your own economic system in a farm. But one of the key tenets of that is not having debt so that we yeah. can make the farm grow. So, yeah, that's the – but the biggest regret people have, right, now, but the, when they come to us is that they don't have the money to be able to buy all the st – not, not toys and gifts and stuff, to be able to buy the stocks because right now you're paying it to credit card companies. Yep. So we have to walk through it. You were going to say something, then, uh, then I'm going to go walk Yeah, through. I was going to say that's a great example of how debt is the enemy of wealth and actually consumes wealth because the money that you're spending paying the credit cards back or 
paying unnecessary debt back is that same money could be used to build your farm. You build know, farm. you could you could buy more stocks. You can yep. invest in companies that you know are strong, thriving companies because you should invest there. in your own company, you know, your own business. You can invest. Right. A, you can start your own business. You could invest in more real estate. It, all of that is available if the debt is not consuming your wealth. Right. I got to say one more thing because also uh, 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 Pastor Mooney brought up earlier. He said that about how we're we're we're, we're married, uh, our wives, but also one of the things. We have kids. And then also one other thing is how we communicate to our kids. Uh, you're sitting listening to someone right now who's never told his kids, never, not one time, told his kids we can't afford nothing. I've never told them that. My kids yeah. could walk through this door today right now and say, Dad, I want to buy a yacht or I want to buy a, air, a private plane. You know what my response would be to my children if they said that? I'd say, great. Let's look up how much one cost and let's look at how we would get the resource to do it. Because did I, did I tell you this one day, uh, Pastor Mooney, one day my daughter had not the gall, not the nerve, but the audacity to walk in here and ask me for $20. And I said, what? for what? Yeah, ask me. You guys, some of you don't know me on this thing, but like that was shocking. Like her brothers were standing around the corner looking at her like, wow, like, like send her in, like, see, you know, just to see like what, what would happen, you know. She send the $20. lamb to the slaughter. <laughs> All right. She asked me for $20. I said, Gracie, what, what do you need $20 for? And she started telling me that she wanted to go get some boba, the stuff and the stuff at the mall. And I said, I turned to her and I said, hey, you guys come in here and sit down. I said, so what do we have to do in order to get $20? Come on. And she said, you know what? Um, I like, I said, she, I said, you like those little soft scrub, the little bot, bot, bath bombs. I don't even really know that much about it. All that stuff like a bath and body. I said, so look, let's make it and then let's sell it and then let's work on a profit margin. So like she came in. So anyway, so make a long story short, because we got to get into debt. Is that get a, get a, get a, show you how to get out of debt? Is they came in and then I went and bought the materials for about fifty dollars. Then she made all the stuff and then she now she has a business because yeah. it's like you have to get that mentality going. So like right now we're gonna go through how to get out of debt. But then what you're gonna do is the same skills you use to get out of debt, you use those same skills to build wealth, and that's how you're gonna walk through it. So Anything top three reasons it? that people come to you from all over the country and say, help me get out of debt. I want to buy a house. That's, that's uh, I want to be able to retire and get off of the treadmill. Right. And then I'll, I want to be able to start my own business. Right. And, and, and But so, they're saying it in a way of building generational wealth. Like, I want my family, going back to house, I want to do a business. Like, they work at a, I'm just using an example, they work at a daycare. They say, I want to open up my own daycare. I'm like, well, we have to get, we have to have some way of doing it, or the resources. So with that in mind, how then, George, let's get practical. How do we get okay. out of debt? How do we do good? All right, everybody. Let me show you how, to, how you do good. So first of all, I want us to take out a piece of paper or then also if we're going to use a computer, we can also do this. But also everything I'm going to say is also in the book, The Wealth Cycle. And we just have a, a grid and we kind of walk through these things. So there's just some things we need to know mindset. And then we need to walk actually through these things. So first of all, we want to take our debts and we want to start writing them down, okay? The, the name of the debt, how much we owe, what the interest rate is, and then what the minimum payment is, okay? So you're going to do that on all your debts, but you start from the lowest to the highest. Now, someone's going to say to me, hey, I want to start with the one with the highest interest rate. We don't want to do that. We want to start with the one with the lowest balance because we want to do is we want to get victory psychologically we can talk about this later um bishop Moody. psychologically people always say um hey i want to start with the highest one of the highest interest rate but the reason why we start with the lowest amount is we want to get victories quicker you know like it's, yeah, it's good to win snowball. so when you pay something off yep. and we want to get it right and you, and you heard this from the, thing, but the snowball we want to start so we want to get these so we start taking the debt and we start taking that and we write them all down okay that's the first step then this um, then we also want to start paying the that amount and we want to get something called a debt multiplier. So now I'm going to explain yes. a debt multiplier. That means I'm just going to use one hundred dollars above and beyond what all the minimum payments are. Mm -hmm. So one of the first things you're going to do is you're going to pay the minimum payments on all of them except one. OK, answer questions at the end and doing this and you can ask me any question you want at the end. Pay the minimum, but you want to get a debt multiplier of at least one hundred dollars. 
So a good debt multiplier, though, would be we want to get a percentage to be able to start paying these debts off quicker so we can get, a, we can get an amount. Then the third thing that after we, after we get the debt multiplier is then we also want to stay disciplined. After we start paying off the debts, we don't want to start adding any, we don't want to start adding anything to them. That means we want to have a balanced budget. So yep. that means our income and our outflow need to at least save 10% to 20% of our income. We will do an entire show on how you budget for wealth building. But those are the steps that you want to start to start paying off your debt. And then we walk through them. Anything you want to add to that before I repeat it? No, I think that's huge. I, I think uh, the practical example of the whole debt multiplier is, you know, I love thinking about, let's just say you got five credit cards. And let's right. just say you own, I mean, you owe rather, you know, I don't know, $10,000 on four of the credit cards, but then you owe maybe $500 or $1,000 on one of the cards. So to put this in practical terms, George is saying, tackle the one card that you owe the least on. That'll be the one that you owe $1,000 on while paying minimum payments on the others. And then once you pay that off, you automatically tap into the debt multiplier because you can take then what you were paying to pay off the $1,000 debt and you can add that to the next one that you want to tackle. So now you're paying minimum plus the additional that you were paying and then it begins to snowball and that's how you're able to get out of debt faster. Is that a great practical example, George? Yes, that's a great example. And the reason why I was bringing this up to, to repeat it, that's, you, you, you did it perfectly. So, Bishop Van, also the reason why we have people do this is when you start with the lowest and you're not adding to your credit cards, it stops you from getting off the, it gets you off the cycle. You remember the, yep. I go to work, I pay the, I pay the debts, I just take whatever amount of money. And what people do is they'll send an extra hundred, let's say back to your five credit card illustration, they send a hundred dollars to each one extra. And then what happens? An emergency comes up and you don't have an emergency fund. Yep. Then you just keep adding back to them. So what we do is we take all $500 and focus on one card. And then we pay that card off and then we put that card away. We don't use it anymore. And then you guys are yep. going to go through another class on credit. So what we do is we don't cancel cards because we don't want to, we don't want that to affect our credit rating. So what we want to yep. do is then we do more specialized training with you if you need more on that area where we just start paying them down. But this goes to having a balanced budget. And then this goes to focusing on one card and paying all the debts off. And then it's very exciting when you do that. I think that's, 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 that's one of the most helpful ways of um, doing it. And it's also very exciting because actually when you pay off a credit card, you're actually pretty excited about it. You know, like when we do these Absolutely. things. Absolutely. And uh, people used to take their credit cards and cut them up. That, I didn't say close the account. They used to cut them up and they used to bring them to me in little bags because I used to call credit cards uh, plastic crack. Uh, you know, because they, you know, you know, well, you know, I mean, if you look at, if you look at it, if you look at it, Bishop Van, credit, yeah. you know, credit cards kind of have some similarities, right? The first is what? They give you an artificial high, right? Yep. You thought you could afford it when you went in there, right? And you really good. All right. The second, this is also number one, but the second one is it's wrong, but you do it anyway. You know what I mean? Like everybody yeah. that's, when they get ready to put something on a credit card, they do it. And then the thing, and then third it's kind of insane. You do the same thing over and over and expect a different result. You say, hey, I want to buy a house, but I'm putting something on a card. You know what I mean? Like, it's costing my car, my thing, this. And just so you guys know, debt is very expensive. Absolutely. Like right now, they run your credit to get certain jobs. You cannot be a financial advisor if you have bad credit. I mean, doing that. And then also people come to, come to our classes, and sometimes they're getting ready to be a police officer or a firefighter. You know, you can't work certain jobs if you have, if you have bad credit. Yep. And if you're in a lot of debt, because you, could you imagine if that was a police officer? Because that might be someone would be taking bribe. They think that you'd be more apt to do that. They also do that for now for car insurance and different things. So it's very expensive. And back then, we could talk about this also. In the inner cities, you see all these check cashing places? I went in there, and they had a TV that was for rent for $100 a week. You know, when I, you know when I went in there? You know when I went in there, it was like kryptonite to me. Like my energy was just getting zapped. I was like... I can't afford it. You know, the one guy was telling me, like, I was showing him how to make it. He was making a payment. I said, let me explain to you how expensive this is. He showed that TV for $100 a week. I said, okay, and then I went back. What did we do? We went back to Carlson. I said, 
uh, after a month and a half, you could have bought the TV. I said, yeah, they're going to kick the you out of that place, George. I'm oh, surprised they, they, oh, they did. Yeah. They, yeah, they was there. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't there very long before they were, because I kept, because of all the expressions I was making. I was like, oh, my. They thought they had Fred Sanford in there. I was, <laughs> Elizabeth, I was coming to join you. <laughs> about, I'm sorry, people under 40, there's a guy, Sanford's son. He's grab his chest, say, Elizabeth. They don't know anything about you. that. Right, gotcha. But, um, all right, so, so. Let's get back to doing good in the little bit of time we have left. I want to make sure that we understand. So the first step is. Yes. Okay. We're going okay, to we're gonna pay debt. the. Gotcha. For, to get out of Go debt ahead. is we're going to pay the minimum on all cards except one. Yep. Cool. Yep. And then. Two. Once establish that's a done, debt. You tap into there, there. You go. Establish a debt multiplier of at least one hundred dollars, um, but you can make them higher. We'll also talk about that. I also give you things of saving money, but also get a debt job. You know, get something at night. If you if you like going to the mall, get a job down there at the mall. Make a couple grand. Pay off the pay off the uh, pay off the credit card. So then you want to establish a debt multiplier of at least one hundred dollars. Cool. And then what's next, George? Next step is stay disciplined. Meaning that once we start paying these credit card debts off, that we keep doing it. And then the last number four is make sure that we have a balanced budget so that we're we're walking right through it. Because if we don't have the balanced budget, then we're going to be able to not stay disciplined and end up going back right. into debt. That's really, really, really right. critical. Right. And I just want to tell you one other positive thing about this that I want you to, that, that I really want someone to that's really in a, in a tough situation. Remember, I'll be you, struggling, steady, solid, surplus service. I walk through different levels of people are financially. Somebody out there that's just not this like, hey, I don't, I'm just, um, I'm going to use the word steady. I make just enough to pay my bills, but if something snap, crackles, or pops, I start struggling. Is that I want you to learn how to do this debt multiplier, and I walk through yeah. this with you in my, in my books. And, and if you go to georgebthompson.com, we give you three chapters, the first couple chapters. Um, you can just download them, and you can get them. But you should get the book, walk through it. But let me tell you the reason why I want someone that just doesn't have anything to do this. These exact same debt multipliers that I use right now to show you how to get out of credit card debt and all this stuff are the exact same ones we do to build portfolios where you own five and six, seven houses. Because what you do is you establish a debt multiplier that way and you pay off actual homes. I love and you it. walk through that process. So that's actually how that's the millionaire and training process actually started, was showing people how to do that. But if, if Sears is struggling, if Sears are, and Chase is kicking your tail, then 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 we got to first we got to we got to remedy that, show you how to build wealth so that you can get, so that you can graduate to the houses. Incredible, incredible. Well, listen, he already gave you the place to go to get more information about what we just discussed. GeorgeBThompson.com. Uh, you can also go out to VanMoody.org or TWCCC.org. Uh, we also have some great resources uh, on financial stewardship, financial management. But this That's is right. why we do this podcast, particularly on financial freedom, because we know that it is not only God's will, but it is our desire, George and myself's desire for everyone to experience financial freedom and to create wealth, not only for them, but for their children's children. There is a verse in scripture, George, I just thought of a good man, a good woman leaves an inheritance to their children's children. But we yep. can't do this if we don't do good. So, family, thanks for joining us today on the Freedom Podcast as we have yet again gotten into a great topic on financial freedom. Once again, I'm thankful for the hostess with the most just all the way from L.A. Y'all see what I did right there? George <laughs> B. Thompson. You can find him at georgebthompson.com. And you can connect with me at Van Moody, V-A-N-M-O-O-D-Y dot org or T-W-C-C-C dot org. Until next time, I want you to pursue freedom. Know that it is God's will for you. And hope that we'll come together again on the next episode of the Freedom Podcast. Take care. We hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Freedom Podcast. For a broader range of topics, go to Van Moody's YouTube page or visit TWCCC.org.